John Fetterman has been hammering his opponent, Dr. Oz, for being a carpet-bagging multi-millionaire elitist who's out of touch with working-class Pennsylvanians. And in an appearance on Laura Ingram's program on Fox News, Dr. Oz hit back with a very powerful, no you. Take a look at what he has to say, because everything that he's saying about Fetterman is nothing but projection. Who is this guy, John Fetterman? Because it, this, this story keeps getting more fanciful by the day. Well, Fetterman's a fraud. I'm actually in Pittsburgh now, which is close to where he's currently living, although he's not from here originally, and they know it. And they tell me all the time how much they dislike him. He was supported by his parents until he was elected as lieutenant governor four years ago. He lived on handouts without paying his taxes correctly, by the way. And yet he's raising taxes right now, advocating for that on the working class after pushing for reckless spending programs and you know creating all this inflation. And he's a rubber stamp for Joe Biden. And here's the thing. He's the most radical Democratic candidate in a contest election this cycle. I'll say it again, the most radical in a contested election, yet no one knows it. And by the way, if you want to go to DrOz.com and help me get the word out, it will be helpful because he stored up so much money that he's been telling that tale that you just showed. I, on the other hand, I'm the, I'm the son of an immigrant. I believe in the American dream because I lived it myself. I respect the needs of workers hurt by regulations and overreaching government. And the reality is John Fetterman believes in big government and bloated bureaucracies. That's his life experience because he's never had to actually work to make his own money because it was given to him. I believe in the people of Pennsylvania. And if you believe in the people and individualism and what you do if you work for yourself, which is what the American dream was about, that's the deal. You work hard, you succeed, you do the right thing. You achieve things that are unimaginable anywhere else on the planet. If you believe that, come to DrOz.com and share your thoughts, because that's the story we're going to tell as we win in November. Well, Dr. Oz, you know, they've been spinning this tale, as I said, and it's always, you know, the kind of the stunts and the costume. So he has the costume. He kind of looks like Uncle Fester hits the gym. You know, that's kind of what he looks like. <laughs> well, you know, God bless him. I'm glad he's well. He's doing better and so forth. But. They, you know, they put Snooky out there to say you don't live in Pennsylvania. But are, are you living in the house that you and your wife were married in? I think I read that somewhere. Is, is, is that the case? It is the case. 37 years ago, best decision I ever made. I was in medical school in Philadelphia at Penn. I also went to Wharton Business School because I was studying healthcare finance. Might come in handy when I'm serving in the Senate. I grew up just south of Philadelphia, had a couple children in Pennsylvania. I mean, these are fairy tales. But even the Inquirer who's not been a big ally of mine, is saying, enough, Fetterman, start talking about real issues. Stop hiding in your house. The Joe Biden program is not the right thing for democracy. Come out and talk about real issues. But frankly, Laura, he never has. He didn't talk about real issues in his own primary. He didn't leave his house that much to campaign. People thought he was lazy. I don't know what it is, but he doesn't like to go out and meet people and actually answer questions. The desperation there was palpable. That was painful to watch. And even commenters were pointing out how this isn't necessarily the best look, but we'll get to what they have to say. I don't know if you noticed it, but did you catch the Chiron? Because it read, tattoos and hoodies can't mask Fetterman's elitism. Glenn Greenwald, moments away. So I love that. So they're trying to spin it to where it's not actually Dr. Oz, the multi-multi-millionaire who has seven different mansions, who's the elitist. It's John Fetterman. Is there a single person who's going to buy this, including... Republican voters in Pennsylvania, because I think that it's so demonstrably untrue that it makes Dr. Oz look like even more of a phony than he already is. I mean, there are videos of him giving us tours through his mansion in New Jersey where he's playing basketball in his indoor basketball court. I mean, I don't even have an outdoor basketball court, let alone an indoor one. So, I mean, you have seven different mansions and you're saying that, oh, your opponent is the elitist? I mean, you're just like, this is the political equivalent of the third grade comeback i'm rubber and your glue whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you that's basically what dr oz is doing here is it not he also says uh fetterman's a fraud okay well i have a lot to say in response to that but my first question to dr oz is this you my father taught me how to handle my first gun i taught my son oliver how to do the same I've been shooting and hunting my whole life. So when people say I won't support guns, they're dead wrong. Boom! Very authentic. Look, if you are actually a genuine person, you don't have to make videos like that where you brazenly pander to voters. It's just, it's embarrassing. And to call 
John Fetterman a fraud when there are stories like this out there. For example, the Daily Beast reports Dr. Oz's dark history of promoting companies he was quietly invested in. The celebrity doctor turned Senate candidate has long used his platform to hawk supplements, but he had a more personal interest in some products. Yeah, so basically everything that he's saying about Fetterman is true about him, and it's what Fetterman has also said, but he's spinning it. No, you. I'm not the elitist. You are. I'm not the one who's out of touch. You are. In fact, people tell me that they don't like you. Really? Who? Who? Who's saying that? It's such a weird thing. Like, anyone can say that. What you would ideally do if you wanted to showcase how unpopular John Fetterman was, was you'd get these folks to get on camera and vocalize their distrust with Fetterman. I'm sure that there's enough people in Pennsylvania who dislike John Fetterman, so if you actually wanted to demonstrate how unpopular he is, you can do that visually, but instead you're just claiming, oh, well, people tell me all the time they don't like him. Okay, that means nothing. That's not being reflected in the polls right now, so what's your point? He also said uh, he was supported by his parents until he was elected uh, lieutenant governor four years ago. He lived on handouts without paying his taxes, by the way. Okay, that makes you seem even more out of touch because there are a lot of people who have to live with their parents because the economy, have you taken a look around? I get that multimillionaires can't really grasp what normal Americans go through, but it is really, really difficult to afford rent. So if you have a family member or a parent who owns a home and living with them is the way that you can survive, that's what unfortunately a lot of people have to do. A lot of millennials, a lot of Zoomers have to do this. So for you to say, oh, well, he lived, lived with his parents. He never had a real job. I mean, that just makes you look even more out of touch. So even in his critique, where he is trying to portray John Fetterman as being out of touch, he ends up inadvertently making himself look even that much more out of touch. Now, we've talked enough about this. We don't really have to get through uh, or debunk all of his arguments because I think that they're kind of on their face absurd. But the reason why I say that is because even Fox News viewers, they see through Dr. Oz's phoniness. Now, now I don't want to give you like this misrepresentation of the comment section because most of them were supportive for the most part of Dr. Oz. But there were a lot of comments that stood out to me because of the uh, inherent skepticism with their support for him. So let's get to some of these here. This guy better get on the ball and actually develop a real message. There's a reason why he's trailing in the polls. He's been soft peddling since the primaries and doesn't have any on point message like DeSantis or Yunkin. He's too big to be so desperate. He needs to learn to come up on his own. He looks crazy as hell. Lord have mercy, I hope I'm wrong about Oz. Pennsylvania needs him to be real. Dr. Oz will not win in Pennsylvania. There is no way. Remember, folks, Dr. Oz does not support the Second Amendment. I don't trust Oz, but I also didn't trust Trump back in 2015. I think Oz will be better than we think. Not perfect, but 100 times better than Fetterman. Oz answers to his home country, not us. A little bit of xenophobia there. Another one, uh, I hope Dr. Oz is all he seems to be. If he is, we need someone like him. Can you say rhino? This man is a joke. I'm not sure about Oz. In other words, we like the things that he's saying. We just don't necessarily believe that he's going to deliver on the things that he's saying. We don't necessarily believe that he's authentic. And these are presumably Republican voters. I don't know if they're from Pennsylvania, but if Fox News' audience can see through you, if they think you're a little bit too wishy-washy, that's a problem. Again, I've said this once, I'll say it again. Dr. Oz is the Republican equivalent of Hillary Clinton, where he's so inauthentic, so out of touch that every single time he tries to appear more relatable, it ends up making him look even more out of touch because he is incapable of being personable when you're so out of touch. I mean, when you are a hundred millionaire, your life is so radically different than the average human being that you can't possibly relate to them. It's just, it's impossible because you're like, you're a different person at that point. And your experience is so different that there's no way you can even have a conversation with normal people, which is why, you know, these elites usually exist within their bubbles because they don't know how to talk to the peasants. They just try to tell them what they think they want to hear, recite the same talking points that they've been hearing, but it doesn't land, especially if you're not good at selling the product that you're trying to shove down their throats. One more article that I want to cite here real quick. We're not going to get into this here, but this is from Puck. Oz's great escape. Republican Party insiders are increasingly frustrated with what they perceive as a certain laissez-faire attitude from the poorly polling GOP Senate candidate who has spent nearly as much time on vacation as on the campaign trail. So what was it that Dr. Oz was saying? 
about uh, John Fetterman, how he doesn't want to get out there, he doesn't want to campaign and talk to people, you've been on vacation as much as you've been campaigning. And again, shows how out of touch you are because how many Americans can, can say that they take vacations? And if they take vacations, it's usually staycations. They don't have the money to travel. They don't have the means to have fun on their vacations. They just take a break. And also, uh, I forgot about this, uh, but I've got to bring it up. The Uncle Fester reference. I mean, this is their attempt at firing back. It's just, it's so embarrassing. It, it's so embarrassing. This is, you know, one of those hello fellow kids moments and Fox News, Laura Ingram, she's trying to help him. Like she's giving him these softballs. I heard that you've actually lived in Pennsylvania for a very long time. Is this true? Like you can just like imagine the setup before this interview. Okay. So it seems like one of the biggest critiques is that you're a carpetbagger. So let me ask you this question about, you know, um, where you've lived and then, you know, think about what you want to say with regard to that answer. Prove to people that you're a real Pennsylvanian. Like it's such a softball, like overly propagandistic interview that it just, it speaks to everything wrong with mainstream media and everything wrong with these inauthentic Republicans who are elites that just want power because they're bored and once you buy a yacht, a mansion, and every single car, then what? Well, you can't just retire happily with all of your hundreds of millions of dollars. You have to try to assume power because what else is there to you know accumulate? If you've got all the money that you could possibly get, then you seek out power. And that's what we're seeing with Dr. Oz. So look, even though currently Fetterman has increased his lead, it's not a foregone conclusion. If you live in Pennsylvania, definitely uh, do what you can to support John Fetterman and get out the vote. Because even if Dr. Oz is a terrible candidate, we don't necessarily know if momentum will shift back in the Republican Party's favor. So we'll have to wait and see. Either way, uh, Dr. Oz is so desperate that it comes off as just pathetic. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralists, woke moralists, woke moralists. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. Her genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.